the cat behind me. Gracie. Gracie Grace. I call her Gracie Grace. She's already had her bath, so she's just ready to look cute now. So I hope that you had an awesome Saturday. I did. I didn't get a whole lot accomplished, but it was a good day. Um, we are going to be doing Psalms 38 tonight, and I want to, I was a blessed to be able to watch a concert that I really wanted to go to, but just wasn't able to this year because of, uh, but everybody in Atlanta didn't have a mask on. I don't know. I don't know whether people in Fort Worth have a mask on tonight or not. I think Fort Worth was tonight. Anyway, I will read to you. I kind of did a a step-by-step -step rundown of what I was watching. I normally don't do that, but I thought that would be kind of fun. I was sitting in my chair watching, and so I just kind of did a step-by-step. -step. So let's pray. Gracie, you want to pray? Oh, she meowed, but she's, I think she wants to sleep. She goes, I came to sleep. Thank you. She goes, I came to sleep and look cute. And I, I took a bath, so I'm clean now. <laughs> All right, well, let's pray. God, we just come to you and we thank you for all the many things that you do for us. God, you are so amazing. And you are so powerful. Well, she's out of here. Um, we thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our protector, our provider. We thank you for being our shelter in the storm. We thank you for being our strength and our refuge, God. You are magnificent and powerful and mighty. And you are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness. Not according to the world's truth, but according to your truths that are in your word. And God, we just thank you that you are caring and loving and compassionate and kind. And God, that you are patient, that you want none to perish. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. We pray for the lost, God. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would open their hearts to the truth also, God, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they can be saved. We pray for the prodigals to return, God. We just pray for them to return to you and to repent, to be reconciled, God, and to have their relationship with you start anew. And God, we pray for all the disasters that are going on all over the world. God, we just pray that you would meet the needs of these people. That God, you would send people that would be the hands and feet, the loving compassion of Jesus to help them. God, we just pray for all the people that are sick. We just pray for healing for them. We just pray that they would trust you in the process of your healing their body, that they would feel your presence, God, that you would strengthen their families. God, we pray for the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength. God, we pray for the people that are on the verge of losing their jobs because of an unconstitutional mandate. God, we just pray that you would give them strength, that you would help them to stand what they, for what they feel is right. And God, that you would, if they do lose their jobs, that you would bless them with a job that is a hundred times better than what they have. And that these companies that are standing with this mandate, God, that they would suffer loss in their companies for not doing what's right. God, we just pray for truth to rise above all the lies that we hear. There are so many lies out there. We just pray for truth. We pray for your truth, God. We pray that you would give us the boldness to stand on your truth. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, <clears throat> well, welcome, welcome, everyone, welcome. I'll listen to one guy, he says, welcome as you come in. And I just, um, 
I just think I need to welcome people. I think that I take for granted that I know everybody that comes and watches, but I probably don't. I probably don't know very many of you at all. And so I just want to take some time to welcome you and to thank you if you've recently subscribed. I have a few new subscribers and I, I cannot, I can't find a list of who they are. So anyway, just welcome. Just know you're welcome. All right. Well, let's read Psalm 38. I was just reading a pop-up thing about this mandate, this vaccine mandate, where many people are going to lose their jobs. Many people, the very people that put their lives on the line last year, are going to lose their jobs this year. The very people that got sick, got COVID, survived it, don't feel that it's necessary to get a vaccine, they're going to lose their jobs. That's just not right. This is not America. This is not the America that I grew up in. I don't want a new America. I don't want a reimagined America. I don't want to reset America. I want the America that we grew up in. That's what I want. And that America included God. God was not kicked out of that America. Okay. Prayer in time of chastening. A Psalm of David to bring to remembrance. O Lord, do not rebuke me from your wrath, nor chasten me in your hot displeasure. For your arrows pierce me deeply, and your hand presses me down. There is no soundness in my flesh because of your anger, nor any health in my bones because of my sin. For my iniquities have gone over my head. Like a heavy burden, they are too heavy for me. My wounds are foul and festering because of my foolishness. I am troubled. I am bowed down greatly. I go mourning all the day long, for my loins are full of inflammation, and there is no soundness in my flesh. I am feeble and severely broken. I groan because of the turmoil of my heart. Lord, all my desire is before you, and my sighing is not hidden from you. My heart pants, my strength fails me. As for the light of my eyes, it also has gone from me. All right, well, let's let's um, stop there for a minute. Because this is a Psalm of David. And many times David was not following the ways of God. He was... He had a man killed because he wanted his wife. He had children with that wife. There were many things that David did that were not after the heart of God. But God forgave him. And God did chasten him because God does chasten his children. And when we are doing things that are wrong, if you belong to God, if you have that Holy Spirit in your soul, you're not going to be comfortable for very long because you're going to start getting convicted. I pretty much get convicted now immediately. If I say something or even if I think something, a lot of times my next thought is, oh God, I'm sorry, that was just so wrong. Because the Holy Spirit convicts me. Like as soon as it gets out of my mouth or as soon as I think it, you know, the Holy Spirit is like, oh, that is not godly. That is wrong. So we have that conviction. And it sounds like David felt convicted. He felt broken. He felt like God was not listening to him. Like God was rebuking him. And he was chastening him. Because God does that because we're his children. He wants what is best for us. He wants the very best for us. And when we settle, when we settle for things that are not the very best for us, God is going to try to draw us back because he loves us and he wants what's best for us. My, my loved ones and my friends stand aloof from my plague. 
and my relatives stand afar off. Those also who seek my life lay snares for me. Those who seek my hurt speak of destruction and plan deception all the day long. But I like a deaf man, but I like a deaf man do not hear. And I am like a mute who does not open his mouth. Thus I am like a man who does not hear, and in whose mouth is no response. For in you, O Lord, I hope. You will hear, O Lord, my God. For I said, Hear me, lest they rejoice over me, lest when my foot slips they exalt themselves against me. For I am ready to fall, and my sorrow is continually before me. For I will declare my iniquity. I will be in anguish over my sin. But my enemies are vigorous, and they are strong. And those who hate me wrongfully have multiplied. Those also, also who render evil for good, they are my adversaries. Because I follow what is good. Do not forsake me, O Lord. O oh my God, be not far from me. Make haste to help me, O oh Lord, my salvation. So he's asking God not to be far from him and not to forsake him. And that he does see the Lord as his hope and as his help. Um, but you know, sometimes we stumble into things, sometimes innocently, into things that just are not of God. But God always gives us the opportunity to come back to Him. He is a loving Father. He is the good, good Father. He is the one that will draw you back. He will forgive you. Just like the prodigal son, He will forgive us when we do fall away. He forgave David I don't know how many times. Because there is no limit on his forgiveness. So let's see what our study part says. It says the psalmist felt isolated from God. As well as from family and friends in his suffering. He attributed his illness to divine displeasure and viewed his sufferings as God's chastening. Although sickness in general is a result of in general, is a result of sin in the world. All illness or infirmity is not due to the sin of the afflicted individual. On the other hand, some suffering directly results from specific sins in our lives. We cannot judge others when they are suffering. We can only seek to discern the reasons for our own sufferings. The psalmist saw a direct connection between his suffering and his sin, which had overwhelmed him completely. His sense of his sense of alienation was compounded by the presence of strong enemies. The poet believed that God's nearness would bring him healing and forgiveness. Despite his despair, he continued to pray, as we must continue to call on God in times of suffering and loneliness. And that's so true. You know, we must call on God in our times of suffering and loneliness. And sometimes we do bring suffering upon ourselves by things that we think that we need to do, whether they are according to God's word or not. We live in a world of this where everyone's opinion is their own truth. But this truth right here, God's word, this is the truth we're going to be measured against. We're not going to be measured against someone that this is their truth. That is not what we're going to be measured against. We're going to be measured against God's truth. God's truth is the measurement. All right. Well, I think that's all I want to read. If you have any comments about Psalm 38 or King David or anything about what I just read, even if you disagree, it's okay. 
That's okay. I will not get offended. Okay, so this was my experience this morning, which was a great experience. And I feel like last night I did not want to get on here and do the thing last night because, as you can tell, I procrastinated until 8 o'clock. I just didn't want to. You know, sometimes we just don't want to do the things that God wants us to do and that he's calling us to do. But I pushed through last night, and I did it. And I was glad I did. I really was. Because every time I pick up God's word, I learn something new. And so if no one comes, I'm still learning. And I'm, I'm sharing for someone. Someone might come along and see what I just read. And they might not. You know, and in two or three years, somebody might run across this video and they'll go, wow, I needed to hear that. Well, the sermon that I heard today uh, with Elevation Worship Nights by Stephen Furtick is what I needed to hear today. So I felt like as I was sitting there, I felt like God was telling me, this is a personal blessing for you that I chose for you because I know that you like this band, this worship, this music. I know you like all of their music. You know most of it. And I know you wanted to go to this concert, but things did not work out to where you could. So I brought it to you. I brought it to your house. So you can sit here in your jammies and you can watch this. And you can learn what I want to teach you through this. But this morning when I did my quiet time, God said, I want you to focus on the great things that I do. So to me, this was a great thing. So um, I put watching Elevation Worship Nights in the comfort of my living room in Atlanta. Well, I don't live in Atlanta, but they were in Atlanta. They were in Atlanta. I wasn't. I don't live in Atlanta. So that's kind of confusing. Oh, well, sometimes when I write things and read them later, it's kind of confusing. So wish to be in person, but I can worship in my jammies with Seth, which is our son. I'm so thankful that Seth likes the upbeat praise and worship that I love. I'm so glad. These are all of their new songs. Seth and I are rocking this morning with lyrics that glorify Jesus. This, this is very awesome. I'm going to have to go back and edit this because it's not very good language. I put this very awesome. This is very awesome. <laughs> so this is one of the songs that we heard. My testimony. This is my testimony from Death's Life. That's one of the lyrics. I really like that song because our life is our testimony. Our life is our testimony of what God has done in our lives. And then the next one that we heard was It Might Get Loud, which is so good. So good. One part of it is why can't I praise him as loud as I want? Why can't I praise him as loud as I want? Such a good song. The next one was Never Lost a Battle. You never lost a battle, and you never will. Come to the Altar. That's an older song, but it's such a beautiful song. And then Victory. I'm going to see a victory, which is a very, very um, touching song to me. I have memories tied to it that when my husband had cancer year before last, that was one of the songs that I was cling, clinging to. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. And we did. We did see a victory. We saw a miraculous victory. That my husband's treatment was done in half the time of our sons, which both of them were miraculous. Okay. Um, Wait on the Lord. Such a good song. Wait on the Lord. And I put, this is such an awesome way to refocus on the great things of God. That's what I was doing, was refocusing on the great things of God. That's what he told me to do today. A Million Little Miracles. That's another good song. 
a million little miracles. And what was so awesome about that? At one point in the song, they had scrolling people's miracles in their names, like the type of miracle in their name. It's so cool. And then they just started flashing them, like all kinds of different miracles. It was so awesome. It was amazing. That was such, I said, how amazing. They are listing miracles on the screen, and they were. One of my favorite songs, um, Resurrected King. I love that song. And I saw um, Elevation Worship, the band, Praise and Worship Band. I saw them at Outcry Tour 2016, 2017, I think 2016. I wish I would have written the, the year in all of my t-shirts from concerts. That would have been quite helpful. Um, Our God has Robbed the Grave is part of that song. Graves into Gardens, another one of my favorite songs that's new. And we got to hear a message by Stephen Furtick from God. And so I put, this is a personal blessing to me from God, a blessing of obedience. So last night for me getting on here and I didn't want to, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm never going to lie to you. I didn't want to last night, but I did. I pushed through. I did because I felt like maybe somebody needed to know something that Psalm 37 had to say. And so I did. And so that is what Stephen Furtick talked about. It's part of what he talked about. Um, this is a personal, personal blessing to me from God, a blessing of obedience. I am there in spirit. I'm at that concert in spirit. God has a word for me today and he has a word for you today. That was something that Stephen Furtick said. What does God see in me? That was a question that he had. What does God see in me? Only God knows our hearts. Only God knows our true hearts, our minds. Only he knows. Our thoughts, only God knows. Um, okay, so... I'm going to read, I'm going to read the passage that he read, which was Luke 5, 1 through 11, because my notes are going to make more sense. And that's basically what the rest of this is. It is my notes that I took this morning. Luke 5. Seth is in there listening to Toby Mac, I think Ricky's taking a nap. Seth likes Toby Mac. Okay. Luke 5, 1 through 11 is what he read. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at the feet of Jesus, fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, I am a sinful man, O Lord. 
For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of De Zebedee, who were partners with Simon in with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. Now I have heard this story many, many times. I have read this story many, many times. And so that last line to me says, Oh, I'm going to have to make this quicker because I only have 15% battery. I always have all these things around here. I don't even have a cord today. Huh. Oh, wait. The hair thing. All right. If it gets much lower, I may have to run and get something. Okay. So anyway, I have read this story. To me, what this says, this last line of what uh, Simon, Peter, and them did is obedience in, a, in abandon. Just they left everything. They left everything to follow Jesus. So the title of the lesson was The Momentum of a Decision. So we don't know how big our decisions are while we are making them. You know, we make decisions all day long. We make really small ones. We make medium-sized ones, and we make really large ones. And so when we are in the midst of making a decision, we don't know how big it's going to be. So he said the momentum of a decision happens slowly and over time. And he's funny. So he said, like, you plan to eat three chips, and before long, you're eating five bags. You know, so I thought that was funny. I put LOL. Worship is a decision. Giving yourself to God. My life, not just my song. My fears. Oh, where did it go? My fears and hopes, too. The apostles left it all and followed him. They made a baby decision first. Sometimes our failures are by God's design for something better. And they are. Sometimes our failures are. That God is saving us for something better. I needed to hear that today. Because I've had a, something that I thought was part of my calling. But God keeps telling me it's not time. So I have to wait on him, wait on the Lord, I have to wait on him. Okay. Um, they failed at fishing, so they would have room for Jesus. So the reason that they didn't have any fish in their boat is so they would have room for Jesus. You know, that made a lot of sense. Plus, Jesus got in first. Jesus didn't say, hey, can I come ab aboard and so you can take me out so I can preach. No, Jesus got him first. And then he asked him to push, a little push, out in the water so he could speak to the crowd. Jesus got him first. And there was room for Jesus. Jesus knew there was going to be room for him. Sometimes we have to give a little push to see the great things of God. If we are close to God, we can hear the little voice of God. Jesus knew the amazing things that Peter would do for the kingdom of God. He did. Jesus didn't need Peter's boat because he could have walked on water. <laughs> he could have. He could have just walked out there and preached to the multitude. Um, but he chose Peter to be the rock of the church. He, he knew who Peter was. He chose Peter. He doesn't need me, but he wants me. He doesn't need us to further his kingdom, but he wants us to further his kingdom. Uh, we need to praise God that he got in our boat. We do. Jesus, Waymaker, and he said if he would have written Waymaker, he would have added Name Changer. Because Peter means little rock, but made in the image of Jesus, the big rock. 
Jesus can change us from faithless to faithful, from broken to restored. Jesus stepped in and he's not stepping out. Peter almost pushed Jesus away because he is a sinful man. We raise our hands because we are needy. Jesus knows what is inside us. Put out a little, the little rock. Peter had a ripple effect and we can too. Jesus is calling us to be used to further his kingdom. I will survive this sickness and I am thankful for survival. This is such an awesome message. I wanted to go see this live. We miss God in the details. We don't know what God is setting in motion. Jira. He talked about the song Jira that they wrote, which, um, oh, my thing does not. Oh, where did it go? The Lord who sees, Jehovah Jireh, God knows all hearts, minds, details, and solutions and outcomes. He knows how the details will work together for his glory. More praise and worship. Do it again. They sang, do it again. I love do it again. You made a way where there was no way. That's part of the lyrics of do it again. Rattle. I love the song rattle. I hear the sound. Live, live, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. God said, live. Thank you, God, for this personal blessing. I wanted to see them sing the blessing. Uh, somebody cut that out of their video. I was watching somebody's video live. Perhaps I can find it separately. And Jaira, too. I did watch Jaira. I got to see Jaira. They did Jaira in Nashville. So be blessed today. Focus on the great things of God. So that is my message. Focus on the great things of God. Don't focus on the things, your failures, the things that you think, oh, I am not doing what I need to be doing. That was my deal. I am not doing what I feel like you call me to do. But God keeps telling me in that it's not time. It's not time yet. And I, I so see that because I don't have time. I don't know where my time goes. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with y'all. I hope that um, me sharing my personal blessing maybe blessed you. Maybe there was something in that message that you needed too. There was something very important that I needed in that message today. And God took me there. He took me there. And because I pushed through last night, he blessed me with this today, and this was such a blessing. I can't, I can't describe to you how much of a blessing it was to watch this. Like I said, I would have loved it live, but it was a blessing to be able to watch it. Okay, well, it's time for a salvation message, and I'm afraid my phone is going to run out of battery. I'm going to see how much it has. It's got 12%. All right, maybe it will hang in there. Find a short message. Um, is my shortest one. Oh, this is my. This is my shortest message. This is my if that has the gospel on the back. <clears throat> Do you know the ABCs of life? God created you to experience a full life here on earth, John 10.10, 10, and he wants you to spend eternity with him, 2 Peter 3.9. To become a Christian, you simply need to admit you need a Savior. We all, we've all disobeyed God. We've sinned and earned separation from God, which is death, Romans 3.23, Romans 6.23. No matter how good you are or how hard you try, you can't work your way into heaven. We talked about that last night. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Believe in Jesus Christ, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John three sixteen. Commit your life to Christ. You can, you can believe in your mind that Jesus exists, 
but to have a relationship with him, you must ask him to be your Lord here on earth and your Savior eternally. Romans 10, 9 says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And so this is a very short prayer. Jesus, I have sinned. Thank you for dying for me so I could be forgiven. I trust you alone for eternal life. Amen. That was really short, but I went over all the scriptures that go with salvation. So if you accepted Jesus as your Savior by prayer, admitting that you're a sinner and asking for forgiveness, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. The angels are rejoicing and... Um, your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus Christ, His Son. And if you want to grow spiritually closer to God, then start reading His Word every day. Read at least a chapter and start in Matthew. And also pray. Pray to God every day. And praise. Find you some praise music. There are all kinds of genres of praise music. There is Southern gospel. There is hip hop. There is um, rhythm and blues. There is praise and worship. There, there are all kinds of different praise and worship music. So just find something that you like and sit down and just praise God. Okay, I'm going to do the blessing. That is in number 624. Through 26, from God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Thank you for joining me tonight. I am going to pray. And uh, my phone is fixing to die. And that's why you might feel like I'm rushing off. So let's pray. God, thank you for this time that you've given us. God, thank you again for my personal blessing today. I pray that maybe this was a personal blessing to someone else. God, I just, uh, we just praise you that you are our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector, our shelter in the storm, that you are our strength and our refuge that you know us so intimately, God. You know our minds. You know our hearts. You know our thoughts. You know what we've done in the past and what we're doing in the present and what we're going to do in the future, God. You know so much about us. We just thank you. We thank you for sending us Jesus to be our Savior, to be our shepherd, to be in front of us, to surround us, to protect us, God, to go and get us when we stray away. We thank you for that. We just pray that you would give us the boldness to go out and share your truths and share the gospel of Jesus, share the good news of Jesus. God, we just I just pray for anyone that comes and watches this, God, that you would protect them, that you would bless them, that you would provide for them and their families, that you would guide and direct them. And if they need Jesus as their Savior, that you would draw them to Jesus so that they can be saved. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. My prayer and my pray and share warriors. I have a hard time saying that. I may have to change y'all's name to something that I can say a little better. But probably not. I've been doing this for over a year. Okay, well, y'all have an awesome rest of your night and an awesome Sunday tomorrow. I know it's Halloween, but you know what? I'm going to go and praise God. I'm going to go and learn more about God. And I'm still on a 21-day sugar fast. Tomorrow is my last day. We're having a potluck at our church for our pastor for Pastor Appreciation Day um, month. So... It's all going to be about God. It is not going to be about what Halloween has become. 
So much love and cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.